Okay, hi, it's Alyssa Weinzimmer here, founder of Voice Body Connection. This is my Real Talk with Alyssa session as part of the Present and Awesome Summit. I am so delighted to have you if you're here watching live on the line. Hi, everyone. And um, for those watching later, hi. Okay, so I was thinking about what I was gonna say today, and Susie, I'll also say to you, Susie, um, as I just mentioned, is the Director of Communications of Voice Body Connection and a total amazing human. Um, if I forget to say something, just because I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm speaking from the heart here, and I'm, I'm, I, might, I might, you know, who knows what'll come out. So if I forget to say something that we wanted to share, will you type in the chat box and let me know, please? Thanks. Um, okay. So the present and awesome summit for those of you who have been following along this week has been uh, a new undertaking for me and it's been so special and so fun and I'm learning so much from these conversations and I hope you are too. Um, it's been really exciting. And the reason I decided to do it is because every time I'm launching a, a round of a live class that I teach um, online, which those of you who have been with me for a while know that I am a voice and presence coach and teacher. And if you are just joining, hi, I'm a voice and presence coach and teacher. Um, so whenever I teach a round of a class, I always want to do some sort of free thing so that people can, you know, get involved and see what it's all about, et cetera. And in the past, I've always done a webinar kind of like this where I just talk and I'm like, hey, it's Alyssa and I'm going to teach you something, yay. Um, but this time I decided, especially since I have this new How to Have Presence class, which is all about being present, that wouldn't it be beautiful to have conversations about it and share with other people and be present with others, not just in talking to my computer mode to you. So I sort of through, you know, meditations and dreams and visions devised this summit, which has been so exciting and fun to do. Um, but of course, I didn't realize like it's next level amount of work, right? To put together something big like this. I'm sure many of us have done big things in our lives, produced big things where we understand that um, it can be a lot of work. And so what I thought I'd share today is a little bit about like the real behind the scenes, about what it's um, been like for me to come up against needing to practice exactly what I'm preaching. Um, and in order to go into that, so I'll, I'll tell you more about the How to Have Presence course in just a little bit, because of course that's also the purpose of this session is to give you a sense of what that class is so that if you're interested in joining me, you can. Um, but I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. What I want to do first is I want to share. I want to just be really honest and transparent and vulnerable. So it, it'll help if I start with talking about um, a concept that I teach. Um, which is actually not my concept. Um, it comes from a British voice te teacher named Patsy Rodenberg. And Patsy is, um, like I said, a voice teacher. She comes from the theater world. That's my background too. I would say it's probably, in fairness, well, I guess if I think about all of my training, it's been over a decade that I've been studying presence and have been really, really interested in this question of what is presence? How do you have it? Do people have it? Do they attain it? What is it? Um, Patsy has this vocabulary around it that is fascinating and really, really helpful to me. It is the three circles of energy. The three circles of energy are first, second, and third circle. And I'll define them for you. First circle is the circle of withholding my energy, pulling it more back into myself, being more concerned with myself than I am with the outside world. And when I say concerned, I don't necessarily mean worried. I mean literally concerning myself with me more than anyone else. So that's the energy, the state of energy of first circle. And you may relate to that. I'm probably gonna be, this is how I felt when I learned this stuff is that someone was naming things that I already understood and I went, whoa, oh God, that's helpful. So that's the energy of first circle. The energy of third circle, I'm gonna skip over second on purpose because third is the opposite. The energy of third circle is that I'm pushing or forcing my energy. I'm kind of spraying my energy outwards um, in the sense that I'm more concerned with the outside world than I am with myself, right? So um, for instance, it makes me think of 
in my early training as an actor, um, I did theater camp growing up. I loved theater camp. And I remember being in the auditorium in the Jewish Community Center and our, um, our camp director was way in the back and he'd be like, I mean, it was a version of like sing out Louise, right? It was, it was like, smile, volume. And I was great at that. So I guess what I'm confessing right now is third circle's my jam, friends. <laughs> I'm really good at it. If you think about someone hamming it up on stage, that can be very third circle. And I rocked at that as a kid, right? And of course, it's just kind of naturally how my nervous system is inclined. Whereas some people's nervous systems are more inclined to first circle, where when they're under stress, they want to go inwards, right? You may be more like that. Um, also, let me say too, because I'm kind of painting a picture of first and third circle, neither of them are evil. Um, as many of you know, I was living in New York City, um, like slash still do go back and forth all the time. And um, in New York on the subway, everyone's in first circle. And that's true of any public transportation situation anywhere, um, is that we tend to go into first circle because we're being, like it's not appropriate for us to be present with everyone, right? Okay, let me get to second circle because that's the good stuff, right? Second circle is the circle of connection, of presence, of a give and take, of a flow in and out, right? When I'm in second circle, I'm really letting my energy share with the outside world. I'm in an ideal world equally concerned with the outside world and with myself. So second circle is where we wanna be most of the time as much as possible. And if you've been listening to the summit this week, you have heard me talk about um, these three circles of energy a little bit with some of the different guests because they have that vocabulary. They've taken this course too and, and um, we, we share this vocabulary. It's good vocabulary, it's really useful. So, as I've already admitted, I tend to go into third circle. And probably as you're listening to this, you know whether, I think the thing is that when we're not present, which it's really hard to be present all the time in this day and age, my friends, right? I mean, we have these things and we have computers and we have lots of coworkers at our jobs and whatever it is, we have so many demands um, keeping us in a state of wanting to go into what I'll, I'll call first and third circle selective forms of presence. It's not even that we're not present. We're just choosing to select to be present in our internal world or to leave ourselves out and just project to the outside world because it's too much to bring our own energy along with us. So when it's hard for us to be in second circle, when we get challenged, we tend to either fall in one direction or the other. And I tend to fall into third circle. Um, it's probably, that's probably, once you start looking around and seeing this pattern in the world, it's pretty obvious um, which type of people are which, right? And by the way, let me say about that too, that introversion and extroversion don't actually necessarily map to first and third circle because these circles are states of, states of energy. And introversion, extroversion are personality traits, which means that if you, if you are, um, you know, an introvert, you may actually go into third circle in a circumstance where you have to give, give a presentation because you're uncomfortable, so you push. So they don't, they're not the same thing. But I tend to be an extrovert and I tend to go into third circle. That's my profile. And, um, and here's what's been happening in the last couple of weeks. So working on a big project, going back and forth with lots of people, organizing them, you know, to come in and have these conversations and making sure that I'm advertising in all the right places that you guys hear about it so you can join me, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of emails to send, making sure everyone gets the right messaging, et cetera, et cetera. Thankfully, um, I have the support from Susie. Um, so I found myself about a week or two ago pushing really hard into third circle, like going into my old habit stuff and realizing like I wasn't taking care of myself as well in terms of sleep. I wasn't eating as well. I was, I was on a trip to New York. So I was in New York hustle mode, all these things. And I went, whoa, 
all right, universe, I get it. You're not going to let me sit here in front of people and talk about presence if I'm not actually present. Whew, right? And I'm sharing this because it's vulnerable and I, I bet you can relate on some level. We all want to show up and be our best selves. We want to show up and we want to be authentic and we want to connect and, and we want love and we want support and we want all these things, right? But sometimes when we're not comfortable, that's probably a huge part of it. When we're not comfortable, our nervous system pushes us into a different state of energy where it's harder to connect. And if we don't understand why that's happening or how that's happening, it can be really, really tricky to bring ourselves back into the state of energy where we're really connecting. And so having studied this stuff for a long time, teaching it, <laughs> um, I realized, of course, I have the tools to bring myself back into presence. I know what's happening. I can identify what's happening. I know what to do. But I just want to sit here and say that doesn't necessarily make it that much easier. It does make it easier. It definitely does. Because otherwise, I would have no pathway whatsoever. But um, it doesn't change the fact that this stuff is challenging, and it's a big deal, and it matters. And having these conversations this week with Jody and Katie and Danielle and Kelly and Mike and Jen and then tonight Kara Joy and tomorrow Ashley and all of you has really on, an, on a deep level kept humbling me to remember what it feels like to come back into second circle, to settle back into the state of being present and not forcing something to happen or hiding, right? So this stuff is, is, I'm just going to repeat something I said just a minute ago. This stuff is, is challenging, but it really, really matters. And, and the deeper I go into thinking about all of it and um, talking to other people about it, the more I realize that a lot of the stuff that's happening on this planet that is troublesome or problematic has to do with our ability to show up with each other and be present. And if I sound like I just got up on my soapbox, it's because I did. Um, I'll say it again. A lot of the issues that are happening on this planet have to do with the fact that we aren't present with each other. We're not present with our environment. We're not present with other people in our workplace. We're not present with our families. We're not present with our spouses. Um, presence, our ability to actually show up in that moment fully as ourselves, but also leaving space for other people, which I think is a way to define presence. Um, is really deeply important. And if I sound like I'm saying the same stuff as Oprah and Eckhart Tolle and Deepak Chopra, it's because I am. <laughs> so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. Anyone want to comment on that? Anyone that's on the line, you can chat in the chat box. Um, you can say whatever you want, but I, I just want to be really transparent and open. Um, well, I guess you can say whatever you want within reason, like try to be kind and present. Um, but uh, I just want to be really transparent and open about the fact that um, we're not perfect as human beings, any of us, really, right? And yet this is something to strive for. Okay, so transitioning. Let me talk to you a little bit about um, the class that I teach and how and why you might be interested in joining. Um, so this course is called How to Have Presence, and um, it is a pre-recorded online course that has seven modules in it. And actually what I want to do, because I feel I'm a very visual person, and I feel like this can be really helpful, is I want to I take you on a back-end tour of what the course looks like. So I'm actually going to share my screen with you for a second and show you at least what the pre-recorded portion of the class looks like. Is everyone seeing this with me, I assume? There are lots of Alyssa's on the screen. Okay. So when you sign up for How to Have Presence, you come into this back end, and there's an intro, and it's split into three different sections, or what I call fundamentals. Um, 
And then there, there are modules within the fundamentals. If you're not following my full structure, don't worry about it too much. Let me keep this simple. Um, module one is about habits. It's about identifying your habits. What quote unquote bad habits do we have and how do we address them and shift them? Um, each module has a couple exercises that support how to embody the concept. In module two, we talk about presence. So this is the module where I go even more deeply into the second circle stuff that I just described um, and, and really get into a definition, a working definition of what presence is. Again, there's um, exercises there. In module three, we talk about overcoming your nerves. If nerves are a challenge for you, then guess what? We call them nerves for a reason. It has to do with our nervous system. This is a um, overview of what the nervous system is, how it works, and how to, I, I like using this phrase, and I know sometimes it gets a bad rap, but how to hack your nervous system so that if you have a sensitivity to going into fight or flight really easily, you can find ways to do that with less, um, you can be triggered a little bit less. You can, you can stay in more what I like to call stay in play mode. Um, in the second chunk of the course, because that whole first fundamental it's called um, is about awareness and just being aware of the dynamics, then we go into the second fundamental, which is all about actually practicing all of this. Um, I, I, I'm going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start going too deeply, but it's okay. This is fun. Um, there's a, um, there's a, a researcher from UCLA from the 1960s who came up with this thing called the three V's, the visual, the vocal, and the verbal. They're the three ways that our audience understands our message. This is like public speaking 101 stuff, right? I have taught public speaking classes for a number of years at various universities. Um, so being fully embodied is about the visual. Does your full body show up when you're on stage in front of people or even when you're sitting like I am in front of a camera? Does your full body show up so that it feels like, so that people's spidey sense watching you is like, that person's there. They're speaking with their whole self. That's a theme that Kelly and I talked about the other day. Um, the module five stuff is all about your voice. So that's the vocal. Um, what is your vocal inflection doing? Is it stuck in the sort of pattern that makes me feel like meh, 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 bullshit? Something's going on that doesn't feel authentic right now, and I can't put my finger on it, but it has something to do with your voice, right? And then module six is about landing your message. So this is um, how, do you, how do messages work? Um, it's the actual content. How do we craft our message so that people really understand it, right? And then finally, module seven, which is in the mastery section, the fundamental, is about memorization and performance. So bringing it all together, because what so very often happens is that you have all of this knowledge under your belt, but then once you have to actually perform and memorize something, you turn into robot, right? Do you guys know what I mean? Robot mode, right? So that's an overview of the class. That's the, an overview of the pre-recorded class that is available at all times. Now, what is extra special about this moment in time is that I am leading a live course, which means, so um, I'm on Zoom right now, you can only see me, but when we get into an actual Zoom room, it turns into like the Brady Bunch, <laughs> if we have the perfect number of people. And we are in boxes, <clears throat> pardon me, water for a sec. We are in boxes and we can see each other um, and interact and have class. We can have an, an, an interactive online class. If you've never done that before, it's cool. And it's the future, isn't it? So um, what I do during live class time is give you a module per week as your homework assignment. So you watch the module just like you saw all of those modules. You do the exercises, you do your homework. Um, none of it is too crazy. Like I don't, I don't think I showed you in there, but the module videos are all 10 to 20 minutes. I really, I understand the busy lives we lead. I am a, a big fan of synthesis and um, I've, I've you know, endeavored to make this course really digestible. So. You watch the module for homework, you do any homework for that module and practice the exercises, and then we come together um, on Tuesday nights, it's going to be in this round, for an hour to go more deeply in real time into the content. And um, 
like I might bring in a like sort of advanced level two type exercise to help you practice or there will sometimes be situations where if someone wants to, no pressure, um, you can be spotlighted and there can be some coaching so you get personal attention. So um, that's what the live class is all about. And what I find is, and for those of you who have been on this journey with me um, in classes for a while, um, hopefully you, you see and I, I can feel that I'm getting less and less um, any holds barred about the implications of what we're talking about. So it can be emotional, it can be spiritual, it can be psychological, just, you know, talking about presence and talking about our voices ultimately on a deep level is about talking about embodiment and expression. It's about talking, we're talking about how we show up as human beings on this planet. Um, what are we doing? It's existential, isn't it? <laughs> so um, really, there's nothing off limits, again, within reason, um, in terms of us exploring this material. So what else do I want to say? Susie, this might be the part where also I need you to remind me. Oh, well, and I have the Q&A questions. So let me go into those two. Um, and again, I'll just reiterate that anyone who is on the line, um, if you have a question for me about class, um, let me know. Let me tell you the logistical stuff. Logistically speaking, um, we are meeting on Tuesday nights starting um, May 29th, which happens to be this coming Tuesday. And here's something that I, when I thought of this idea, I went, yay, what a great idea. First night of class, if you're like, who is this Alyssa character? What is this stuff? What is she up to? You can audit class for free on Tuesday. Um, so I'll let you into the first week. It's a really good, um, it's a really good package of content in the first week. Like I said, it's all about habits and like examining our bad habits and reframing our mind around that. And so um, I just want you to have this information, you know? So um, you can join me in audit class for free on Tuesday night. Um, and then we'll continue, should you decide to be in the full course, we continue on Tuesday nights for eight weeks until July 17th. Classes from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern time um, on Zoom, so not too different than if, for those of you who are here right now, um, uh, so that you can uh, join me. However, if you also um, can't make it on Tuesday nights, don't feel like that disqualifies you. I think I'm answering one of the Q&A questions right now. Um, don't make feel like that disqualifies you because I do record the classes on Tuesday nights and if Just hopping in on the energy of moving through this with people having the support um, Being able to ask questions just really having the accountability of class actually happening right now is helpful to you Then I highly recommend that you just go ahead and join us anyway Elizabeth you're saying something that I think is pertaining exactly to what I'm saying I'm so happy there's a live class because I'm not good with the learn on your own. It's a personal journey that gets pushed off too easily. I didn't do any of the pre-recorded ones that you released earlier. Elizabeth, thank you for being honest. <laughs> I so appreciate it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's exactly why I'm doing this because I know there are some people out there and, and kudos to you if you are a, I go online and I find something that I need to learn and I watch it and I learn it. Um, I really like, I mean, I'm a voice teacher. I really like talking to someone. I really like um, conversing in real time. And I really, really, I can very palpably feel the difference between the support of a group versus not. And I think that's what you're talking about, Elizabeth. So yeah, it's, it's hard to do the learn on your own thing. Like amazing, more power to you if you can pick up a book and change your life. But I think it's a lot easier personally for a lot of us with this type of personality um, to uh, do it in community. So yeah, good, yeah. Okay, so I hope you'll be in class then. Um, so yes, yeah, so even if you can't make it on Tuesday nights, uh, know that my experience with leading this and also what I've seen with many students in these classes before is that even just feeling the energy and there's a Facebook group where you get to submit your homework and I'll interact with you, et cetera, et cetera. It makes it feel really like um, we're actually doing something together and there's a really nice energy behind it. Um, let's see what other Q and A questions I got. Um, will I have to perform in front of the group during Tuesday night calls? 
I'm definitely not going to be that teacher who's like calling on you. <laughs> I, I did, I, I have been known to be that teacher in the past in actual classrooms in um, public speaking, but I won't do that. I promise. I've learned my lesson. <laughs> I'll be present with you. Um, if you want to volunteer, if you want to share, great. You don't have to. Um, so really this is a, it's like a thing that you can um, move through on your own. Oh, this is a great question. Um, for the, you know, former academia teacher. Will I be graded or assessed by you to measure my project progress? Great question. Um, I like to give people a certificate of completion if they, if they satisfactorily do all the homework and I can tell that they made it all the way through the class. I think it's super fun to be like, yay, I did it. I did a thing. Um, but other than that, no, I'm not grading you. I am so delighted to be the type of teacher who has my own business and people show up and they are here because they want to be here. You are here because you want to be here. Um, so no, no, A, B, C, D, F, not interested. <laughs> and I hope that's the future of education, but we can talk about that later. Um, let's see what else. I think I've answered a lot of these. Oh, this is a really good question. What practitioners or fields of study have most influ influenced your understanding of presence? Um, yeah, great question. Um, so I have, um, I have a lot of background in theater, a lot of background in singing. Um, like I said, theater camp was my first thing growing up. Um, but also in terms of presence, um, I'm a meditator. I practice something called Vedic meditation. Um, it's my 20 minutes twice a day practice, and um, it has completely changed my life. And if you have any questions about that, I would be happy, send me an email, I'll be happy to tell you more about meditation and or we can talk about it in class for sure. Um, by the way, my email is alyssa at voicebodyconnection.com. Um, so really, if I think about the different realms from which I've pulled to, to bring all the material together in this class. It's a lot of stuff from the theater and public speaking world. It's a lot of stuff from the meditation, spirituality, uh, presence world there. Um, I, so I'm actually currently, so the reason if you've been following that I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma right now is I'm here effectively, uh, working on a book is, is um, why I'm spending time somewhere I've never been before. And um, the book that I'm working on is about self-love actually, which I think is also underneath all of this present stuff. Really, when you get down to the bottom of it, when we're talking about confidence, when we're talking about charisma, it's like, do you like yourself enough to show up and be fully present? And the root of, um, or rather the source material that I draw upon a lot is my background in yoga and Vedic philosophy. So um, that's going to make its way a lot into this course material as well. But also it's really, really practical. So um, it kind of bridges a lot of gaps. Um, okay, so before I wrap up, let me obviously tell you the other very important details you need to know. You need to know um, that uh, class, the full regular price is $349, but there is an early bird discount going on right now. So if you sign up before 10 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesday, May 29th, you will get class for $299. Um, so pretty awesome. Plus, like I said, you have the option to audit the class for free, the first class and then decide if you want to sign up. And if you do it fast enough, because I gave you an hour after class that day, you can sign up at the early bird rate. Um, so if you want to learn more about all of this, go to howtohavepresence.com, www.howtohavepresence.com, um, and you'll learn all about class. There's a lot of information there. You can sign up. Of course, I will also send you the information in an email in the summit. Um, so if you're not part of the summit, just make sure that um, you register at presentandawesome.com. So now we've got two websites that we're dealing with. Presentandawesome.com is the summit. Howtohavepresence.com is the class. So thank you so, so much for joining me today. I really, really appreciate being able to share vulnerably about why I created this class, 
why I'm sitting here, why we're having these conversations. And for the next um, part of the summit, if you come back and join me tonight at 8.30 p.m. Eastern, I am talking to Kara Joy McKee, who is a city council candidate here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, who has been knocking on doors all throughout the district talking to local Tulsans about what they want in their community. And I think she has incredible insights into what's going on in our country politically, especially in the middle of the country, and how being present with each other, really showing up is what's gonna turn the tide and make a big difference in terms of the political landscape of the very scary political landscape of this country right now. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, it is my honor and pleasure to get to be present with you through a computer screen. And I will see you for future present and awesome calls. And I hope also in class on Tuesday night slash for the whole time. Okay, everyone have a good afternoon. See you soon.